it all started in the morning of the 18th when messages started coming from here and there that you know something something came up and you know can we observe it nobody knew the coordinates at that time by the afternoon of the 18th um, we had decided that okay we drop anything else we would be doing that evening and going for this transient this is a real thing you know that there's uh, there's actually a a coordinates to look at after many emails many you know urgent messages please pick up <laughs> kind of things it uh, the final shot we got was a galaxy 120 130 million light years away and uh, with a new object right right beside it So how a star ends at the end of its life um, depends largely on its mass. So it can end as one of three things, a white dwarf, a neutron star, and a black hole. So neutron stars form when um, a star with an initial mass of about 8 to about 20 times the mass of the sun, so solar mass, um, comes towards the end of its life. So it dies off as a supernova explosion, and what's left at the core is the neutron star. So, in a neutron star, the gravity presses the material so much that protons and electrons form neutrons, hence the name neutron star. So, the mass of a neutron star is about one and a half times the mass of our own sun. But this mass is compressed into a very dense region, a very small volume, so about with a radius of about 10 kilometers. So now, think about putting that dense material in a small volume so the density will become so high that one teaspoonful of material from a neutron star will weigh about a billion tons. So we've entered a new realm in astronomy where it's possible to detect objects in electromagnetic radiation, cosmic rays and gravitational waves. So multi-messenger astronomy means that you get information from totally different things than the electromagnetic radiation that we usually deal with astronomy you know we look at optical light infrared radio gamma rays that's all electromagnetic radiation but now when you get the, the, the information through other means uh, neutrinos or gravitational waves that's what makes it the multi-messenger astronomy another important aspect of this kind of time domain astronomy where it's very good to have telescopes in different longitudes of the planet because you know you're always some part of the planet is looking to certain parts of the universe and if something happens very quick it's great that you have telescopes in all the all, all the different parts of the globe that you'd always have somebody reacting being together in, in a very large collaboration where where you hunt these things down and try to get the first follow-up observations in the electromagnetic spectrum obviously it's a big thing it's, it's being together in a big collaboration and doing something really new <laughs>